Hello, everybody. Hello. Can I well can I welcome everyone to Drawing Projects UK online, and welcome you to the drawing event this evening. We've got a very lovely audience joining us for what I'm sure will be a very lovely and interesting discussion this evening. Uh, we're a small group, so you can all see each other. Um, so please do feel free to have your cameras on and wave, but please do have your microphones off unless asking a question. Um, and we'll wait a few minutes while people gather because we know that it takes people a few minutes to get online uh, and to understand where they are. I'm Anita Taylor and I'm the Director of Drawing Projects UK. I'm also the Dean of Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design, but this is a Drawing Projects UK event and we're really thrilled to be welcoming uh, Pauline Scott Garrett and Gary Sankster for this conversation this evening but we'll wait a moment before we introduce everyone while people gather. We also have Fiona Cassidy with us from Drawing Projects uh, helping us in the background and we're expecting a few more people so why don't you tell us where you're joining from this evening? It'll be lovely to know. I'm in Dundee. Um, so you can I'm drop in, that into the chat. I'm in Trowbridge. I'm in Road. You can pop I'm your microphone. Glasgow. Brilliant. That's great to hear. Hello, is that Evelyn? Yes, an ex Duncan of Jordanston a long time ago. Fantastic. Great to see you here. That's brilliant. And we've got Anne Dartsa from Leeds, Elaine from Musselburgh. Fiona in the middle of Wiltshire, who we know, uh, Morgan from Dundee too. So we've got some very good turnout from Scotland, uh, which is great. And we are expecting a few more people. So I think we've got people from London, Oxfordshire uh, and others. So oh, yeah, please okay. feel free. Uh, hi, I'm Tyswell Derbyshire. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. So we're spread across the UK. We've got Joe from London. There. Let's see. Hi. Great to see um, you. Yeah, lovely. Yvonne. Brilliant. Hi, Yvonne. Lovely to see you. Um, great to have a good Drawing Projects attendance. Um, Yvonne has a <laughs> solo show with us and we'll be doing a, an event with Yvonne shortly too. Um, we're just giving people a couple more minutes. You can see people are arriving. Um, so please make yourselves comfortable. Make sure that you've got cups of tea, glasses of wine, water, whatever it is you need uh, while you're going to enjoy this conversation and I'll introduce Gary and Pauline properly in a moment. Just wait till Ella's joined. Brilliant. So lovely to see everyone. You're in a small group so you're as you've just tested you're able to come on screen to ask questions if you'd like but if not please pop questions in the chat um, because there will be opportunity to ask questions towards the end. I'm really thrilled that we're able to present this online drawing discussion and to welcome Pauline Scott Garrett and Gary Sankster for this online discussion. Um, the occasion for the discussion is Pauline's solo exhibition called Undertow, which is currently on show at the Wittox Gallery at Rise in Froome in Somerset. And this exhibition is part of the ongoing journey of a, developing your practice project funded residency, a research residency with Rise in Froome uh, that Pauline has undertaken. And Pauline uh, is a studio resident at Drawing Projects UK. Uh, she initially studied fine art at Sheffield when it was Sheffield Polytechnic and followed by a scholarship at Academy de Bill. I'm never going to say that one, Bill Denden Kunst in Vienna, an MA painting in Ch at Chelsea. Pauline has undertaken lots of roles within the creative industries, undertaking a postgraduate degree in cultural management at City University uh, and overseeing major developments in the creative industries. But she returned to full-time creative practice eight years ago. Um, and so it's really rather wonderful to see Pauline in our studio, to have witnessed the generation of this project uh, from beginning to this point and onwards. Uh, so I'm really thrilled to welcome Pauline to talk about her practice and the project in a moment. But I'm also going to introduce Gary Sangster, who's going to be in conversation with Pauline once she's shared some images with us. 
Um, and Gary has international curatorial experience in museums in Australia, in New Zealand, in the US, uh, and in London, and is also currently co-director of Drawing Projects UK and an honorary research fellow with Duncan of Jordanston at the University of Dundee. So we're very thrilled to have Gary and Pauline with us this evening. Um, please pop your microphones on mute um, if you're not speaking um, and then and save your questions till we're invited to do them. But please be popping them into the chat as we go. It's really lovely to welcome everybody and really looking forward to the conversation. So if we're happy to go, Gary is going to share the slides for Pauline and then and Pauline will introduce the project. So thank you both. Lovely. Thank you, Gary. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's fantastic to see you all. This is a, uh, a shot across the gallery. So this is the Wittox Gallery in RISE. RISE is the name of the overarching organisation. It's a series of interlocking chapels um, originally built in the 1700s. And the gallery you see here, the gallery um, is uh, the upper balcony of, of that chapel. Uh, now converted, very beautifully converted, um, and uh, you can just see a glimpse of the cafe below, very vibrant cafe, um, and I uh, was fortunate enough to, um, to be able to have a share in this very interesting um, space, and you can see a number of works um, uh, in front of you. So if you just, that gives you a little bit of the flavour of, um, of the setting of the show. Um, Gary, if you could just move on to the next piece, please. So this piece is called Garment. It's one of 11 large prints. Um, it's a diptych. Um, it's uh, one colour on pergamonata paper, and its size is about 134 by 100. And uh, you'll see that uh, it's got little bulldog clips at the top. And you may have noticed in that big shot of the gallery, all the work is hanging loose in, on bulldog clips that for, on the hanging system. It's, um, it, the work isn't framed. It's, uh, it's very much uh, installed in the space. Um, on to the next piece, uh, which is called Pitfall. Oops, sorry, I've got those in the wrong order. This is actually Channel. Uh, this is actually a collagraph plate, and this is about 118 by 84. I chose to include a number of collagraph plates in the show, unconventional, but um, it's, it's a different approach and actually seeing the plates that I made as, as works of art. So on to the next piece, please, please. Yeah, this is Pitfall. This is a, a diptych on pergamonata paper. Um, there's a number of versions of these, um, very much to do with the, um, the sort of theme, the kind of context of the work I made, which is uh, partly to do with migration and uh, partly to do with uh, sanctuary. So if you just move on to the next shot, please. This is a number of stills from uh, the video I made, which is called Above the Noise. Um, so I made this video in uh, conjunction with the video editor, Alison Carter, and uh, it's uh, four, four minutes, 36 seconds long, uh, and this sound and image was recorded in a number of different countries, um, in, in the UK, in Italy, in, in Grenada, in the West Indies, and uses images that I have shot, I have taken um, uh, from the last 10 years or so. And then finally, the next piece is, uh, um, so there's sort of three components to the, sh to the show, 11 large print pieces, the video, which is installed very much along uh, the same um, trajectory as the print pieces. And then finally, a series of 100 uh, small text collage pieces, which uh, sort of circumnavigate that upper balcony of the building and are placed on a prayer rail, on a sort of wooden prayer rail, which is part of the kind of historical furniture uh, of, of the chapel. And these two pieces, one, the top one is called Stranded and the one below is Hieroglyphics. And it's the, the, most of the collages are made out of scrap material, um, newspaper, newspaper, uh, print, all sorts of bits and pieces. So very, very sort of eclectic 
works. So thank you very much for that, Gary. We'll go back to um, the Q&A now. Great. That's brilliant. It's really great to have that introduction to your work, um, just to give a sense of the context. But we're going to hand over to Gary and Pauline to be in conversation. So thank you. Thanks, Anita. Um, thanks, Pauline. And um, I'll say my welcome to everyone, too. Thanks for being here. Um, I should say from the outset that I had the opportunity to um, work with Pauline uh, as she developed this project as um, what I'd describe as an external consultant. I was not um, spending time in the studio. I wasn't in um, sort of regular dialogue with her about the specifics of the development of her exhibition. But I was in dialogue about how the exhibition might be presented within the context of um, the Whitox Gallery at Rise, which is a former chapel, the upper level of a former chapel. And as you could see from that first slide, has some challenging spatial um, issues in terms of presenting art. So I have some kind of connection to the project and um, uh, it's been an honor to work with Pauline and really develop some of um, the thinking about how you might work with that particular space. So I wanted to ask Pauline a number of questions about the work. Um, I guess you, I, I'd send, Pauline said she didn't want to do this conversation if I didn't send her questions in advance. So I have sent her questions in advance, but I'm not going to follow those. I'm just going to ask questions that seem to me to be important. And what I want to know first off from Pauline is, um, what I guess what was what was the impulse behind undertaking a residency, and what is a research residency um, in terms of uh, the Rice Gallery, or the Whitox Gallery rather? Um, thanks, Gary. It's a great introduction. Excellent. It's been fantastic working with you. Um, so the the I, I mean. I, I felt the idea of a research residency wasn't really anything I had particularly experienced before or knew much about, but um, I felt that it was the right kind of noma for a project like this, a year's project of kind of uh, some research, uh, some connections to a particular physical building, not necessarily making work in that building. Uh, and I um, uh, came to it uh, wanting to do a number of different things. I mean, above all, I wanted to uh, develop some new processes and techniques and um, and do some research into kind of practical processes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, research some archival material because I knew that was a really rich place to make work. It was an interesting context. And uh, already uh, before I applied for um, uh, the Arts Council Award, um, which Anita mentioned earlier on, I was already uh, very interested in, in doing a piece of work with that organization in that space. Uh, so um, I started to research documents and uh, uh, narratives relating to the space. It was, I wanted to work, so the research residency for me was also working with a curator. I, you, you call yourself as a, as a, a I, mean, I don't mind what, what you call it, but Gary was instrumental in uh, working with me through the, the years period. It gave me a sort of consistency and helped to shape how the work, um, how the work uh, was researched, um, the whole context of showing the work in that space. Uh, and um, really just, you know, sort of wise mentor really. It's uh, because I, I did, you know, for me, this project was clearly going to be transformative. Uh, and so the idea was to spend a period of time researching, making artwork, um, thinking about a public engagement pro program. And um, I wanted to, you know, touch on um, uh, the, the context. I wanted to uh, develop some new processes and I wanted to increase the scale of the work that I was making and build on and consolidate projects that I'd done before. 
Um, I've done a number of projects in large buildings, but this was this was um, on a particular particularly different scale. I think that probably it's important to clarify. I didn't make work in the chapel. It wasn't. It isn't really configured in the way that I could have a studio there, and so I made the work in my studio at drawing projects. And but spent you know it spent a lot of time in the chapel. Had it kept a regular presence there and. Um, spent time with Gary and, and various colleagues um, uh, discussing the, the potential and um, considering how, I'm, how I'm, I might tackle the whole project. So that's my research residency. I'm sure there are lots of different models, but that the whole project is about 12 months and beginning to end. And the show Sorry. actually opened in the gallery about even a month ago and goes on. And so the development of the project has, has taken a particular form. If you could Describe what the project's about in in a brief way. Um, what is what is the content of this particular exhibition from your perspective? Well, obviously, for the viewers, in terms of looking at the work, the work has meaning in different meanings for everybody that views it. But for me, it's about ultimately about. Uh, about the sort of fragility and resilience, resilience of the human condition. It's about uh, it's about loss. It's about um, about discomfort. It's about reflecting on um, why so many people in the world uh, have to make such um, insecure journeys across uh, large tracts of water to to reach another place of safety or, or not. So I wanted to uh, sort of look at my kind of lived experience and explore um, uh, making work uh, through my lived experience in response to what had happened in the chapel in the past. So I wanted to reflect on journeys, um, people I've met in my life, places I've traveled to, and then look at the history of the chapel and, and, and pull some parallels and start to make work uh, that reflected, um, reflected that context. Um, so it's interesting because I, I love doing historical research and um, I find it very interesting. But, and I one, one really important thing that happened was I got very caught up in the historical research. It's got a fascinating history around um, migration, uh, the, the town of Froome has, uh, the chapel itself was um, played a part in all of that. It was a significant um, space for um, evacuees during the Second World War um, who spent their time there and then attended the little local school. So it's it's got a, a really a really you know important history. The uh, preacher John Wesley preached there, and it's uh, it has had quite a radical history. And uh, I wanted to bring my sort of lived experience uh, and uh, to that and make work that, um, that that built on that perspective. Is it fair to say that you had an idea about the content or the kind of work that you were thinking about and that this residency gave you a further platform to explore that content, which was already in your let's say artistic frame and yes. so my my question is did the resident how did the residency change your initial ideas how did the research and the process of developing the exhibition for installation develop as you moved through the residency period yeah, it was quite a complicated time, actually, because as, um, I started to hint out earlier on, I really got caught up in the research. Um, uh, you know, fabulous archival documents, really, really amazing images um, uh, were av made available to me through the local museum and heritage organisations, my own research and... Um, yeah, so it was a, it was a, it was quite a, it's quite a complex process because um, it wasn't a documentary exhibition that I was making. I was actually making art, uh, and so uh, there was a moment where I really had to step aside from uh, from that kind of compelling body of material and my own particular interests, and and start to you know start to uh, turn my hand to um, making making contemporary art. 
Um, and uh, it was it wasn't a particularly easy process. I, I mean, it's always when you're making work a process. You know, it's always a struggle. I, it's always a struggle for me. I you can feel pretty isolated um, technically. Um, although I'd been very fortunate because of having the Arts Council grant, I'd uh, I'd been able to undertake some new processes, which gave me a different uh, insight into ways of working. I had originally intended to make some very large collage pieces to go in that space. And uh, you'll have glimpsed the space in that photograph I showed you. It, it is huge and it's very overpowering in its beauty, in its light, um, in its qualities. And I knew I needed to make work that um, that not, uh, you know, it could work in a number of different ways. You know, that was the question, was I going to make work that kind of, um, that actually um, uh, uh, fought against that kind of beauty? Was I going to make work that actually complemented it and, 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 and very much uh, uh, sat comfortably in that space? I mean, I was, you know, I'm working with quite a difficult, um, set of uh, of ideas you know uh, that are quite discomforting and are quite painful uh, and um it, yeah i mean i started to make some very large colleges um uh, spent many many months um at building this work but it, it never it didn't it didn't arrive at a place that i felt was appropriate for that space and uh, it took quite a long time uh, i returned from collage to um to print uh, and um, had a sort of a moment where I made a very, very large print piece, um, which had a similar image to the uh, large black boat piece that you, you saw when I, we, sh we showed the slides. Uh, and somehow that very, very large print piece, which we weren't actually able to show in the show because it's so big, um, was a trigger really for, for, for somehow being able to distill my ideas into uh, in in a in a contemporary way, uh, which which did properly reflect reflect my inner concerns. Um, what what would you say then are the are the key forms or motifs that you selected um, for the exhibition, and how did you make those choices? Yeah, I mean, some of it is quite um, it's not particularly um, so. A lot, a lot of my work is quite instinctive. I mean, I will uh, try a number of things. The, the key motifs of that of the of the um, of the large print pieces are is the image of the boat, um, but it doesn't necessarily always look like a boat. It could look uh, like a, a large sea animal. It could look like a a um, a large um, a large uh, object uh, on the coast. It's it's got it's it can be interpreted in many different ways, and I very much wanted that. I wanted it to be something that. Uh, that um, somehow had layers to it that didn't, uh, that wasn't necessarily tied down, um, and uh, but also had a kind of a slightly sort of uh, uncomfortable and um, menacing is not the right word, but quite a, a kind, quite a kind of painful image uh, that 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 could uh, that that looked beautiful, but could look um, that could take you to a place of reflection. Um, uh, about more difficult things. And uh, some of the other images are quite abstracted. So they might be large pieces of plastic that you might see floating in the sea, or, um, or, or for, for example, um, there are several pieces that, that, use, um, that use items of clothing. Um, the first piece that I showed, garment, is a very distinct item of clothing. Um, the less the other pieces are, 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 are more abstracted and more uh, more conceptual, but um, I wanted to use work that I wanted to use images that evoked the evoked the sense of a human presence in the sea, but 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 not but not directly. It was um, I didn't want to represent that at all. I wanted to use um, images that. Um, that, that, that helped that kind of um, altered sense of reality um, and um, that had a sort of um, floated in space, not even necessarily in sea. I used colours that were um, um, bordering on the kind of discomforting as well, a lot of um, slightly sort of yellowy acid greens, um, one or two very, very bright lurid pinks, um, colors that are beautiful in their own right, but actually 
uh, can can um, emotionally can be quite quite disturbing. Is that color palette a departure for you, or is that a no, familiar it's, choice? It's always been there, uh, but because I've made much smaller work before, it hasn't been so in your face. It hasn't been so directly visible. It had. It's also. Um, what I haven't touched on is the process that I used to make the prints because the prints are made in a very specific way using this uh, paper which uh, doesn't absorb the print, uh, the, the ink that it's applied to it. It's actually, uh, the ink sits on top and it gives a kind of, a sort of strange kind of uh, reflected uh, a kind of um, uh, surface, but quite ambiguous and quite difficult to read and um, that that, I, that that was very important to me as well to actually um, so take that kind of slightly disturbing palette and um, start to create some very large pieces of work uh, that uh, that didn't necessarily the imagery of which and the colours of which didn't sit that comfortably on uh, which is a, a, a creative decision. The large print images um, taken together seem to form a coherent narrative is 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 that my projection or is that something that you've evolved as you've developed the selection of prints that you put in the exhibition yeah i think i think you're right i think they they hold together well they've got a kind of coherence they've got they have a sort of um vocabulary that i use in all my work a kind of that um the sort of the, the sense of something being um uh the sort of transparency the translucency the uh, sort of the marks you're not necessarily that clear what they are and i like to um in those i think the prints worked well because they all have a very strong sense of space um, very, very importantly, and something that we didn't even really fully understand until we hung the work is that they 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 look as though they belong in that space. I, I subconsciously, I obviously um, uh, thought long and hard about the colours in that space, and there's a, there's a very, very strong connection to. Uh, some of the surfaces within the chapel building in terms of their colours and their textures and their reflective qualities. So, yeah, I think it's uh, I think they there is a really coherent set of work, and I um, you know had no doubt what to select to go in into into the show, uh, and I was very happy to also show those print the the, the collagraph plates. Some of the prints are made with a collagraph plate plate, and some of the prints are made with a metal plate. I think it's probably important to say that I don't see myself necessarily as a printmaker, but I use printmaking techniques to, uh, in a in a sort of non in a non traditional way. It's my work's quite kind of hybrid, and um, it's not necessarily um, uh, uh, very conventional. Um, and as I say, I don't particularly see myself as a printmaker. That um, sense of hybridity in terms of different forms to use um, prints involves, um, for this particular exhibition, a lot of overlaid imagery. Do you think that all of that kind of, um, I guess a kind of hangover from collage techniques of overlaying imagery in a certain sense um, is, is something that is key to your practice? Yes, yes, I like to. So because those, those that's that overlay is really important. It's always been there in my work. Um, I just one or two people um, uh, here tonight who will know my work from college, uh, and it's always had a kind of uh, ambiguity to it. Uh, the overlay, the kind of transparency that I'll build up, um, the um, the ambiguity. Um, all of that is um, is a sort of way of me negotiating my ideas uh, of, of making art. And yes, I do it. Uh, so some of my print work in the past, um, some of you will uh, be familiar with my previous print work and a lot of the larger collages that I've made where there's a lot of layering and there's a lot of uh, kind of veiling of surfaces with different, with different materials, tissue paper, mylar, all sorts of transparencies. 
And it's quite difficult for me to explain, but it's a way of me expressing um, uh, the some, some of the difficult meanings that I'm, I'm, or some of the difficult contexts that I'm working with. A lot of my work is around is around um, pain, about uh, wounds, about uh, loss, about demise, about um, things that are often quite uncomfortable. And I suppose. Um, I have made work that's very kind of raw and visceral in the past uh, and that can really kind of jerk you with discomfort. Where, but this is my preferred vocabulary where I'm dealing with difficult subjects and themes for me, uh, but I, um, I like to reveal and not reveal to, um, to present things um, that are... Um, then not always absolutely clear to create a space of reflection uh, and association in my work, uh, but but not in but but not necessarily tell the whole story or reveal the whole setting of what I'm trying to. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the the mood of the work is fairly somber, um, <laughs> but but it's not it's not in any way distasteful. And so even though you're dealing with um, serious concerns, the end product is, is in some ways quite um, involving for the audience. So what I'd like to ask now is about the three kinds of work that you have in this particular exhibition. You have um, the wall work, the print work, which is unframed and unmounted and suspended. Um, uh, and it's in a sense raw paper with images on it, fairly large scale, certainly large, quite, just a little bit larger than human scale. And you have um, a, a, a video, a short video for four minutes long, which has um, quite a tight montage effect to it, which I'd like you to describe what your intent was and what you think the outcome was and how you went about that. And then finally, uh, what could be described as a major installation really is the prayer rail um, piece. I, I honestly forget what it's called. I think it's called Rise um, Prayer Rail Work or something like that. But um, that that's a major installation which comprises um, many, many works which are installed directly into uh, the prayer rail, which surrounds the entire upper balcony. So there's three bodies of work here, which are all around the same thing. There's the large scale print work um, on paper. Um, there's the video work, a short um, production. Um, and then there's the prayer rail piece. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the video and the prayer rail piece. Yes, I mean, uh, so uh, I wanted all three three sets of work um, uh, to have a kind of coherence. They had to have a hanging together, not necessarily a direct kind in terms of their images or colours or anything, but there had to be a sort of sense that uh, they they were dealing in part with the same concerns, but maybe in a in a in a different way, and. Um, the um, yeah, so the video was a completely new entry point for me, and um, uh, it was. Um, interesting and um, it sort of I think the fact that it, it's sort of like a new way of me kind of synthesizing images so we talked a little bit about how I use a kind of veiling or a kind of layering of, 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 of um, paper of, um, um, of different two-dimensional surfaces so working with a video was just was 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 compelling really because suddenly I could I, I could work with those in a much much flu more fluid way, um, and working with moving image and with sound uh, and actually working with content that I had created created myself in my own life. All of that content in the video is lived experience, um, and it, I selected it and I selected and chose the work to go in the video because that, that lived experience connected to the topic, the broader topic of the exhibition. Um, that 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 topic around um, uh, um, the journey across sea, um, uh, migration, um, a whole whole series of things. 
and um, uh, yeah, it's just it's a it's a it's an as I say, it's a new entry point and one that I feel um, um, is intensely personal because it's it, I was present at all those experiences that are um, that are, that are visible on that video, and um, I you know, I feel that that is definitely going to be. Um, a way of working for me in the future. The prayer rail. Um, just yeah, just before you go into the prayer rail, yeah. is there a way for you to describe um, <clears throat> what the uh, narrative of the of the video is? Um, so, does it have a does it have a beginning, middle, and end, or is, <laughs> it, or, or is it just of like a a flower? It's. Um, it's probably more like a flower. It's not really got a narrative. It's a series of um, journeys and uh, re um, reflections on journeys and pathways. Um, and it, it, it has a lot of natural um, material in it. A lot of, uh, much of the footage was actually filmed on boats. Um, and um, there's some great little bits of soundtrack um, that, that we were able to use from 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 sea journeys, um, and um, yeah, it's 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 a so there is there is some moving image, but there's also some uh, some some shots of still images interspersed with the with the moving images, um, and um, it's um, it's it's so it does in part lull you into a sense of um, floating through um, a, a journey, um, taking a journey somewhere. Um, it, it's 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 quite sort of low key. But then some of the images that are interspersed are uh, uh, more urban settings and um, necessarily um, sometimes quite shocking and quite uh, quite abrupt. Um, although the whole four minutes of the video is flows together pretty 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 well. Um, but it's, it's got it's got a sort of beauty to it. I I feel. I mean, it's it's the first time I've really worked with so much with sort of natural resources because I'm as interested in the natural environment as I am in the historic environment. And I felt like this really sort of started to open the door for me. Were, were, were the audience reactions predictable or, or did you get any audience reactions uh, or responses to the video that surprised you? I have been surprised the amount of time people have taken to watch the video. As I say, it's only four minutes. It goes through very, very, you know, it's, it's you know, blink of an eye almost. But I've been astonished um, uh, because I, I I was surprised that people have you know um, one or two people I've met while I've been in the gallery have spent you know half an hour watching it on a loop going through um, and um, and and a couple of people who who already knew my work said that they felt that the video was one of the most compelling things in the show and that um you know um, which i found very encouraging because it, as i say it was an, it's a new entry point and i, I is, really is that it. how you feel too I, f I feel like it's got some um it 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 it, it touched upon um my concerns really really well it really enabled me to kind of show things that i'm interested in investigating and reflecting upon and I feel yes. Um, I've got. I've got a, an awful. I, you know, technically, I've got a lot. Um, a lot to experience. Um, and at the moment, as I say, I'm. I'm working with Alison Carter, who's the editor, who's a video artist herself. But I, you know, I felt that it, it enabled me to achieve um, an, an end result that I that was that was very different and was quite powerful. Um, when set alight alongside some other work that I've made. The prayer rail is completely different. The prayer rail is a lot of fun. I mean, as I say, it's about 100 pieces, um, which just, um, so it's, it's a site-specific piece that they're, uh, they're, 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 they're quite light touch and they're sort of prompts. Um, they all contain a little bit of text or some letters or something as a, a kind of prompt to reflection. And uh, you know they're 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 fun. They're supposed to be uh, you know a, a, a lighter insight, and they give you a chance to uh, reflect in a different way. 
I mean, it's a fabulously huge space. And the, what was really great is that it also draws people around that very, very huge space. It's on a different level to um, the, the large prints and the video. And um, it, it gives you a different sort of reflection and gallery experience by stepping down and starting to follow a route around the edge of the prayer rail. And it's, it, as I say, it like, circumnavigates the whole space and it's... Um, it's uh, you. You can actually, you know, sit down and enjoy them as well because the the um, the little um, pews are still intact in that part of the church. And uh, yeah, it, it's 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 the first time that the gallery have have had a piece like that that isn't conventionally um, pictures that are you know that are hung on the wall. So I think they were they were pretty thrilled to see uh, the building interpreted in a different way. And what is what is the prayer rail piece actually about then what are what are all the the hundred pieces add up to they add up to um a sort of as i say a prompt uh, uh they're they're you know a, a visual and textual prompt to the topic of uh, flight and migration um that they are um they they use a lot of um, everyday phrases that we very easily trot out in the english language uh, juxtaposed with an image, um, and um, they they're 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 very handmade, and they're um, they're they're quite delicate, uh, and they are almost throwaway, really. And that's kind of part of the idea. They have a they don't have a particularly precious quality, um, but they are um, they're 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 like little they're little kind of um, insights into. Um, our kind of feelings about certain topics or uh, reflections on things that, you know, we're kind of powerless to change, uh, but we think or see uh, in, this, in, in the media every day. So, Have you ever made work like that before? Yeah, I made um, not quite like that, but not so, not so with, I suppose, with what you might call the political slants, although they're not really political, politically, directly political at all. But they, it's the first time I've made such a huge series of work and um but i'm i'm a, i'm a, i love collage i've always loved um working with found materials um lettering from found materials and um so yeah but i've never made an installation like that before a lot of my installation work has been uh, probably more serious and more um, more uh, conceptual and um, has been about um, uh, kind of a flow between spaces um, and that that installation is, is very different it's a it's a it's a it's a um, it's a it's a kind of journey uh, along along a wall and, and it's that has surprised me in the impact that it's had from audiences and people have seen it as a prayer wall and I've, I never ever coined that phrase it was always just it's just the prayer rail it's where you would put your prayer book um, and people have said oh I it's you know they felt that it was very clever because they saw the small individual collages as prayers and it's I, I have to say I hadn't seen it like that at all. I was probably just way too immersed in making the work. And but I've had some really superb um kind of reactions to it and um, and a lot of people were really wanting to follow up the details of those pieces and understand. We just shift shift gears a little bit and can you tell us about the challenges of presenting work in a very defined space with very large windows and full of um, furniture that you basically couldn't tamper with. Yeah, what, it was were, the, huge. what were the challenges, and how did you <laughs> how did you address them? Well, the challenges was to, were to, was to make work that could fit in that space without looking, you know, um, insignificant or or overbearing. So there was a fine line to be in terms of making the work. It was the challenge was also I had to make work that could be hung on the hanging system because it's a, it's a historic building which has a very specific hanging system, and so. Although I might have gone in and wanting to make work in a very different way, um, because it's a public space and because um, you know it, I had to be respectful of that and make work for that, you know, cope with the um, all sorts of things. Like you know, there's a change of temperature in the building. There's a cafe down below. Um, it's um, there's parameters within which you've got to got to work, and I, I find that exciting. I find it really interesting, and I. I, I thought about it very carefully um, every time I visited the building. 
Um, and it's a sort of antithesis of the white cube, isn't it? It's sort of like, you know, it is very complex. It's got, you know, layers and layers of, 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 of different furniture and, and installations. And, um, but, you know, I, I found it, I found it, uh, yeah, it was complicated um, and uh, challenging. And um, it was, you know, it, it could have been challenging to hang it, but actually we'd done a lot of research. I'd got a lot of, a lot of that prepared off site and actually it, it, we hung it very, very easily. Can you tell us um, what the worst experience associated with this show was? That's such a great question, Gary. <laughs> Um, the worst experience, yeah. Um, well, there were quite there were a few along the way, um, but um, yeah. I mean, I, I sort of it, there was a really, really. You difficult don't have moment. to if you don't want to. <laughs> there was a really difficult moment where you feel like you're completely on the edge. I mean, you know, there's a couple of times I woke up and thought, like, you know, okay, I may. I'm going to have to give the Arts Council grant back because, I, you know, I just can't get, I'm not going to get there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I felt completely on the edge and, uh, and sort of, you know, isolated in my studio. Not because the studio is isolated, but I felt isolated in my head. And because, you know, making work can be very tough. And as an individual, I have to go through some sort of, you know, I always have to go through some difficult crisis uh, uh, you know, struggle of getting over that edge and coming out the other side. So yeah, there was some pretty dark experiences in it. Yes, um, uh, uh, but you know, um, the joy of then being able to create work that you know flew off the press. Uh, it was very exciting, and then you know looked so good in that space. You know, was, that that was all left behind. That's good. <laughs> um, can you tell us uh, how the how the show may? Um may have affected um, the next steps for you. How, how, how might you have changed your practice or changed your thinking? Yeah, I mean, I feel ideas? like it's given me a huge amount of confidence and um, uh, kind of um, uh, strength, you know, because I, I set myself an enormous task. And um, it, it's sort of, so I feel like I really understand how uh, how uh, the, the how how important the research is to producing work, and that um, I want to work like that in the future, um, and um, uh, and that you know that, that sort of um, uh, that way of working, which is complex, which is layered, which isn't necessarily straightforward, which doesn't always look like contemporary art, but, but is very much contemporary connected to my lived experience. I realized that's where my strengths are. And I, you know, very much in terms of taking, uh, taking this, taking the whole experience forward, uh, which has been utterly, utterly transformative. You know, I want to now look for, to understand where the other spaces are that I can work in this, in this kind of interesting and challenging way. I mean, one of the most difficult things um, which I'd like to share in this in this talk is that I find it I do find it very difficult to build a narrative around what I do because it is something intensely personal. It's it's quite um, it's it's quite um, it's it's quite uncomfortable. Some of the work I make, it's not necessary. It's quite fragile. My thinking is sometimes quite delicate and my that was reflected in my approach to making the work and it's quite difficult sometimes to articulate that and it's been a really great experience in terms of putting the show together to get more confident about articulating those things you know understanding where my strengths are in terms of making work what what is um what is successful for me uh, and how to, you know, not necessarily replicate, but, but take that forward and um, and not even necessarily work at a larger scale, but but continue to um, do that work that's based around, you know, my own sort of identity and um, and the kind of human condition. That is definitely where, um, uh, where I'd like to go forward and, you know, to identify where I might do, um, do more work. Uh, not necessarily in exactly the same format, but to build on the, the practice that I've developed. I think Anita wanted to raise some things. Um, I think I really wanted to um, to welcome some other questions into the conversation. I mean, I think there are there are a number of things that are running through my mind which are, are echoed in the question, which is 
the positioning of personal experience within something which has a parameter um, as an investigation. Um, but I think, you know, overarchingly, the thing that comes through is actually how valuable this whole project and process has been, and, and in a way how much that exemplifies the opportunity for artists to dedicate some time and space to exploring something, and all the doubts that you've expressed along the way about, you know, is it art, is it something else, where do I go, they're actually held within a framework, which is about the question you had. And I'm guessing there are questions there which um, you've touched on uh, in the chat, but I wonder whether you could talk a bit about that whole sense of, I mean, you've moved around a lot in your life, so that sense of migration, movement, re representing oneself, finding new ways of being, and I'm wondering if you could say a bit more about that and the connection to this idea of uh, migration, this idea of undertow. There's, I mean, it's such a powerful title for a show, which has resonance that you can see might be about personal, emotional experience as much as it might be about referring to the sense of a river or a tide or the sea and the kind of danger and precipice, you know, the precarious nature um, of the particular situations we see at the moment around migration and refugees and, and others. Um, so that's that's a very long, convoluted reflection <laughs> and set of questions. So I'll do a very quick answer. Yeah, it's uh, you've touched on a very, very important thing thing for me because I've lived in many, many, many different places and several different countries and um, the, the precariousness of that, the, the, the whole uh, being a, having to reinvent yourself all the time, the, the kind of sense of identity and all that, those are big questions. Um, I mean, part of my grow, my sort of major growing up years was in Manchester, which is, you know, such an important city in the world. It's, you know, it was like the sort of, cru not the crucible of the industrial revolution. It was a city with, you know, of, of, of thinkers and philosophers and learning and, um, you know, um, activism, um, you know, at, at over, over decades, over centuries. So I, I, you know, those years of growing up in Manchester were really incredibly influential. You, you can't take a step without, uh, you know, without c coming across the kind of, the weight of kind of philosophy and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, industry and, uh, um, and impact on the rest of the world. So yeah, I've lived in a lot of places that have had an impact on elsewhere, and I, um, you know, lived in a couple of different countries, uh, and still do spend time in different countries where immigration, where you know, loss and uh, of identity through immigration, through um, you know, really difficult circumstances. I I can't but be aware of those things. So it's um it's it's huge really um i mean i also you know discovered a significant family immigration story within you know within my own family completely sort of incidentally and and that totally changed my perception of who i was and who i was connected to so um yes there's the that that has shaped me massively and probably informs all, all my thinking and uh, and, and definitely in, in informs this creative practice. And and in terms of that discovery, I mean, Morgan has a question which is about has anything changed in your own reflections since creating the work? But but that's that own dis, that self discovery is something that wouldn't have happened without the project, or would it have happened in a different way? And then we can answer Morgan's question. Sorry, I suddenly realised I hadn't looked at the questions, and um... oh, you you don't need to, but <laughs> but Morgan might want to ask it. <laughs> it's, it's, sorry, could you just rehearse that quickly again for me? Oh, but Morgan was. I'm asking it for you, Morgan, if that's okay. Um, it was a question about the challenges you feel you've experienced making the works regarding your own personal experience, which you just really articulated. Um, and the sub question to that was: Has anything changed in your own reflections? since creating the work? Um, no, it's consolidated. My, it's consolidated in my, yeah, it's, it's stronger and clearer. I, I'm, you know, I'm, 
and they sort of claim me it, if you like, I realised I've just been around the margins up until now, and this has been transformational. And so, yeah, it, it has changed. I'm sure that's a, that's a great answer. Gary, I don't know if you want me to pick up some of the questions in the chat, because there are a couple, and I'm conscious that not everybody's seen the show, and there are questions about how people might access some elements of it. Sure. But there are some sure. questions from sure. people who have. Yeah. Um, so the question from someone who has, I believe, seen the show um, is about whether there are any specific items within the chapel archives that became significant to you as the ideas generated. Um, it wasn't within it was it was the connection with the, the evacuees during the Second World War. Um, that was huge. Um, I just. Um, it's such an amazing building. It's so complex. It's got so many different elements to it. And it's not just the space where the gallery is. And I, I mean, having seen some archival photographs of what the building was like in the, in, you know, the 40s, 30s, 40s and 50s, as well as a couple of hundred years ago, well, 150 years ago, obviously not that long. Um, it, it's, you know, it, 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 it's, I was very, very um, connected to that sense that the children would have been living in that space and um, that school uh, that they attended is literally around the corner uh, from the Wittox gallery and they would trot up the hill twice and back down again twice a day and the children from the school would come and um, uh, come, to, come to, the, um, to the chapel because there wasn't enough room for them all to be taught in the school. It was just like a very, very touching thing and so we and that became very important in the project because we've actually, a part of the public engagement has been, um, this week actually we're doing some workshops with, with the school um, that has that connection. I, I, was, I was really touched by that. That's fantastic. We are coming up to just a few minutes left. So Gary, given that you're the, I mean, I think it's been really great to hear you too in conversation because would, you've been working together on this. So would, your last I would question. Like to ask, I would like to ask at least one more question. Um, Pauline, how do you think the work would change in terms of making it or perhaps producing the next show to, to place it in a, a white cube gallery or yes. a white walled gallery as opposed to the... Yeah. Uh, eccentric chapel that it's in at the moment. I think I'd, I think the work would still have a, um, a, a have the power that I feel it has in the chapel. I think it, it I mean, there is something incredible, you know, incredibly coherent about it sitting in that space and very kind of meaningful, if you like. But um, I would love to see the work in a in a in a in a white cube space. Um, and yes, you would probably. Um, there would be some significant adjustments. Um, it's kind of difficult. Um, the work, I don't think, fits very easily into, into frames. It's quite vulnerable. Um, I, but I would love to see it um, installed in a in a um, a you know a pristine space um, where there weren't weren't other references um, uh, in a way getting in in the way of your reflection of, of the contemporary art. Um, I mean, it's it's it, it's it works both ways. I think it's fantastic in the chapel, but I would really, really like to see it in a in a different sort of space. I think it would it would it would probably change the meaning in part. Um, there would be some clarification, for, possibly, or maybe loss of meaning. And I guess, um, what's your next show going to be about? <laughs> <laughs> My next show is going to be. Um, um, about the same, it will have, will, it will still have the same concerns. That's because that's who, who I am. But I want to, um, I want to, to, uh, uh, to make the work not in the UK. I, I'm really keen to, um, to actually develop a set of work um, out of this country, maybe somewhere in Europe or, or maybe one or two of the other countries that I spend time in um, because um, I, you know, I feel that that um, being in this location within this society and with all its influences and so on, um, it, it would be good to strip some of those out and, uh, and, and, and see through a different lens. Although, as I say, my concerns 
um, will be um, will be similar uh, and um, uh, if not exactly the same, uh, but but seen through a different lens. Okay, thank you. Was that your final question? That's a great question and a great <laughs> way to to end. We did have one more question from the audience, but I think we're at time. And I'm sure that we can manage a response to that in a different way. Um, can I say thank you to everyone for joining us? But most of all, thank you to you two for having an, a live conversation, um, which I think has given us a huge number of insights into your project in particular, Pauline, and the way that your practice has developed through the support of, of this opportunity to focus on something very specific, which is actually tested and challenged and produced. What's well, a very beautiful show uh, in the setting in the chapel with many resonances um, that people have really responded to. Uh, you know, the prayer, the, the idea of the prayers of the collages, I think is really moving because they, they build to something. The video does something completely new for you and the prints are absolutely extraordinary in the space and the way that they float. And I'm with Gary, it'd be really interesting to see what happens next and what they're like in a different context, because they will take with them uh, the content that you've developed, which touches on your own personal histories and connections, your lived experience, but also really reaches out to engage with a whole different uh, perspective in terms of a history of migration and refuge, and refuge um, in this particular context. So can I say a huge thank you to both of you uh, and we can clap if you want to make a noise or just say lovely things in the chat. You will, I think, still see it. So a huge thank you to you. Really appreciate it. Um, and can I say a huge thank you to everyone for joining this evening and spending an hour with us to really listen to a development of a really compelling project uh, and a fantastic Q&A session. Um, we have some more events coming up. We have Yvonne Crossley on the call, who has a solo show with us at Drawing Project, who so will be in the gallery if you're able to travel, both on Saturday the 14th and on Saturday the 11th of November, so 14th of October, 11th of November. There's an online uh, event with Drawing Correspondence on Sunday, and if any of you are in London, I'm in the Trinity Boy Wolf Drawing Prize doing a director's tour on Saturday too, on Saturday the 14th. Please look out for a whole range of other drawing discussions coming forward, including with Yvonne, uh, around her show, Octogenarian Dance, uh, but also around the Trinity Boy Wolf Drawing Prize, where we'll be meeting a number of the artists and talking about the show um, as it goes into the next space. We'll be doing some virtual presentations and engagement around that. So I've taken you over the seven o'clock um, an enormous thank you everyone for joining us thank you Fiona for being there in the background and hopefully you've picked up some of the references someone did ask about how to see the video um, it is something that we could I'll talk to Pauline about it so no guarantees uh, it is something perhaps we could share to a closed group uh, via Drawing Project's channel uh, but we'll talk to Pauline about that as to whether that's something you want to do because it changes the context uh, of seeing it but I can see if you can't get to see the show that's it's been tantalizing to hear about it um, but really fantastic conversation fantastic audience great questions thank you so much for joining us and Pauline thank and Gary and Fiona will stay on you. just for a moment thank you thank you very much thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you very much great feedback thank you so much everyone <laughs>